So in this video I'm going to talk about colostrum and why it's so important for this newborn calf, for the next coming days, for the coming weeks and its future lifetime performance. I'm also going to talk about colostrum gold which is a premium colostrum replacer and where that fits in in the whole colostrum story. But now I'm going to take you on what I think are the fundamentals around colostrum management. Starting with why is colostrum so important? Stick with me, it is worth listening to one more time. Why do we talk so much about colostrum? Well, calves are born immune and naive. Essentially, the mother, she has an immune system and she must transfer that immunity to her young calf. She can't do it like humans through the placenta, she, so she does it in this first milk and that's absolutely essential. So this first milk, colostrum, has twice the protein and fat, so it's highly nutritious for the newborn calf to get it going. It's got all these antibodies or large proteins from the mother, which is enabling the calf to develop its own uh, immune system in the gut and also get soaked into the bloodstream. It, that gives it its ability to fight infection. So that's a really important immunity piece. There's also growth hormones and other factors in colostrum. And I think the young calf's gut in the first hours of life is like a sponge. It's ready to soak up those nutri the nutrition, the protein, the fat, the antibodies, but also these growth hormones are there to help that young gut develop. And that's a really exciting area of colostrum. So I'm gonna just talk about now some of the fundamentals of colostrum, uh, but it really is the foundation of the calf health system. <clears throat> The first thing we talk about when we look at colostrum is the quality of the colostrum. Um, it's so important that it's the first milk. We can actually test colostrum quality on farm and that's something that I would be advocating doing. It's using a Brix refractometer, it's a simple device, you put a little drop of colostrum on a clean Brix refractometer and you look through it and you're measuring density and we're looking for over 22%. And What I find that very useful on farms is it can be done in the first 10 animals that calve down, it can be done in the middle at the end, it can be done with all samples, it can be done where we have a doubt about colostrum quality. Um, it's brilliant because if we know that there's poor quality colostrum, um, then we want to make sure that are we making the right decision by putting that into the calf or have we an alternative, have we spare better quality colostrum or is it something like colostrum gold that's needed in those situations. But also it tells us about the diet that the cows are on. So several things will impact colostrum quality. Nutrition is one of them. I see this in sheep, beef and dairy farms. So if we're seeing very poor colostrum quality, we've got to look back at silage analysis, forage analysis and look at maybe supplement supplementing the cow pre-calving to ensure that we're doing everything we can to lift colostrum quality. So the first thing we want to get right when we look at colostrum is the first milk, that it's high quality and we can measure it on farms. The next important cue of the colostrum story is quickly. So we want to make sure that this calf gets colostrum as quickly as possible. The young calf's gut is like a sponge. Its ability to soak up and absorb these large antibodies or proteins declines with every passing hour and certainly decreases dramatically after 12 hours. Now the calf is actually most likely to suckle in the first hour once they haven't had a hard calving or there's something else gone wrong. Um, and people will often ask, should we give colostrum by tube or stomach tube is there, or, or by suckling? Is there a difference? And to me, there's no difference but you'd aim to have um, your calf suckling. You can tube your colostrum if uh, it's a management decision or if there's a difficulty there and the calf won't suckle. It's important that we get that first colostrum in as quickly as possible because that young gut closes down and its ability with every passing hour to, to absorb these antibodies decreases. So another important factor with colostrum is the quantity that we feed the calf. Now that can depend on whether it's a dairy calf or a beef calf, but generally what we talk about is 8% of body weight. A good rule is 3 to 4 litres for your dairy calf, and that can be a little bit lower if you have much smaller calves potentially. But that's that good target to get 3 litres of the first feed of colostrum into the calf. With a dairy cow, with a beef cow, it's not often, uh, they mightn't have that quantity, but we'd still aim for that 3 litres as a minimum. And certainly for your bigger Holstein, Frisian calves, you'd be aiming even up to four litres. And calves will often even suckle quite easily that amount. Uh, people often talk about you know, a second feed of colostrum and to me, uh, from what I know about colostrum and understand about colostrum, I think that is a very positive thing within the next six to eight hours having a second feed of colostrum on farm. One other thing that's often asked, should we feed colostrum warm or cold? Mother Nature gives it warm, your young calf, particularly if it's colder weather outside, I am a big fan of feeding warm colostrum. There's farms that don't do it and have no issues, but uh, it'd be my be advice, a best practice that we feed warm colostrum where possible. The next area of colostrum that we really, I think, need to get a lot better at. So we've all, we all kind of know how important colostrum is, but colostrum's full of fat and protein. It's the ideal medium 
for bacterial growth. Clean colostrum is really important. The young gut is like a sponge. I want you to remember that in the first hours of life. Ready to soak up all the goodness the colostrum has to offer. But it's also ready to soak up any bad bugs or bacteria. And that's something I've been doing here on farm and on a number of farms. Is looking at the bacteria in colostrum that's particularly been stored for longer than 12 to 24 hours just in buckets. And it's quite frightening what you see. The amount of E. coli and different pathogens that I'm picking up. And they're if they're growing in colostrum, they're the first bugs that land into that gut, and that's not good. So we need to really focus on our cleaning routines around colostrum management. So how we're storing in buckets, stomach tubes, and setting up strict protocols, because colostrum is fatty, it's difficult to clean. We use a product here on farm where we're looking at really trying to break down that layer, that protein layer and fatty layer. We don't want that building up, because it's the ideal medium for bacterial growth. So cleanliness in colostrum, it's often overlooked, but for what I'm seeing on farm it's a really really important factor and it's about consistently looking at your system and having simple hygiene protocols that make it easy to clean utensils or anything that you're using to harvest store or administer colostrum I think another really exciting area when we look at calves and the whole thing around colostrum is this idea of epigenetics this young gut isn't fully developed if we look at milk versus you know, colostrum, there's a whole range of elements in it um, that, are, that are not in, in whole milk or there in certainly much greater concentrations. They're there for a reason. Mother Nature does these things for a re reason. They're, she, they're there to help develop the young gut. They're there to help the calves' gut develop and mature. I'm fascinated with the whole story of the microbiome and gut health. Uh, why is there oligosaccharides, uh, insulin, growth factor in much greater concentrations? It's there to help the young calf. This is going to affect future lifetime performance. And it's just another reason we need to really focus in on colostrum. It's still the foundation for the young calf and health, but it also is probably the foundation for their future uh, potential on the farm. Okay, when we're looking at storing colostrum, we often keep colostrum in buckets around the yard uh, during calving time. Remember, if it's warm, certainly, it's a matter of hours before bacterial populations really take off in this colostrum. We don't want that young gut, that sponge, that bacteria are the first thing they get. So really looking at uh, storing colostrum, ideally refrigerating it if you're keeping it. You know, okay, well, there'll be the argument in colder weather it'll keep for a long time, but it's just a risk on farm. I uh, test a lot of colostrum and I see a lot of pathogens come and back in it and, and I think it's a risk area it's something to think about uh, we can refrigerate for 48 hours we can freeze colostrum for up to six months um, and you know that that's effective as well if you want to build a store of colostrum and um, to make it easier remember that we want to make we often want this colostrum in a hurry um, and colostrum is very sensitive to over been overheated never put it in a microwave to thaw it out and you're better off putting it into flat containers with a large surface area Double Ziploc bags work well in, in liters, so we can just put them in and stack them on top of each other. There's these ready-made bags that you can attach stomach tubes to, and they all work well. But the main thing is, don't put your uh, colostrum into water you wouldn't put your hand in, never put it in the microwave. Um, and the same thing when it's, you know, it, ideally you try and put it warm into the calf. That'd be some of my top tips on storage of colostrum. Okay, one other thing is when we're pooling colostrum, and a lot of farmers will do that, uh, just maybe checking the pool colostrum quality, remembering that there's a high risk with a disease called Yonis when you're pooling colostrum. It can be spread from the dam to calf through colostrum, and it's a very slow-burning disease in, in animals. We often don't see the clinical signs until they're older, but it's a real problem when we have it on farm, and pooling colostrum is a real risk. We can, and we do have the option of pasteurizing, and some people pasteurize colostrum, um, but I think if you follow some of the rules, we've done up to now you go a long way with really good colostrum management we can check colostrum transfer in our calves there's a test called uh, testing for passive transfer and what we're looking for is we can take blood samples from calves between two and seven days of age and um, uh, on that blood we can measure serum protein or we can do ZST tests and essentially that's checking um, to make sure that the calf has got the right amount of immunoglobulins in um, and it's a really good way I suppose uh, of kind of checking in on your system to see how it's going maybe halfway through calving doing it with a few calves or if there's a disease outbreak one thing I would say when there's a disease outbreak not to take those bloods from dehydrated calves or sick calves because that can influence the results so we want to try and take them from healthy calves between two to seven days of age and that test I think might become even more important as we try and rear calves and more and more dairy to beef systems having that knowledge that you're uh, looking at passive transfer on calves and doing a good job is the foundation of calf health 
Okay, so hopefully I've made the point that colostrum is the foundation of good calf health systems. Um, but from time to time, we're not going to have good quality colostrum. From time to time, we'll have no colostrum. We do look at replacers. And to me, colostrum gold is a premium replacer. And I'll tell you why. I was looking to visit the farms in Scotland where high health status farms where the colostrum is harvested from. Um, it goes through a unique freeze drying process. And what really, I suppose, uh, did it for me was that it's as nature intended. All the fats and proteins and all these growth hormones and other factors that make colostrum such a, a, a critical part of calf health. Um, so as a replacer, it's good to know that there's something in a bag that we can reach for um, and it has everything we need. Um, for a full supplementation, you can go for a bag and a half. What I'm using for this far is where uh, colostrum quality is poor on farm, where, you know, colostrum you know, we're looking at maybe diet to improve it and we have an issue around maybe a little bit of supplementation. I'm using it on farms for full supplementation where it's needed as well, where there's problems or animals calve in with no milk, where there's issues with Yone's disease. Again, it's maybe an option for um, the mothers of those calves to ensure that they get a high quality colostrum. It's nice to know we have a replacer like this if we need to um, call on it um, that is exactly as nature intended. But for me still, the focus, nothing beats maternal colostrum and focusing on those key areas like quality, uh, getting the quantity in, getting it in quickly, getting in cleanly, doing it right. Colostrum, I've said it a hundred times probably in this video, but it's the foundation of calf health systems. It really pays now for the young calf for the next couple of weeks and even for future lifetime performance. That's it, that's my top tips on colostrum. Happy safe farming.